Hello, my name is Tim Alvarez. Today, I would like to tell you about my MEM project. The Seeking Root Farm is a small regenerative agriculture project led by Matthew and Janine Getter. The goals of my MEM project were to help this farm increase productivity, aid in soil restoration, and develop a system of black soldier fly composting bins. I would like to start by introducing the Seeking Root. The farm is in Waikapu, Hawaii, a suburban municipality in Maui's Central Valley. Before the town became a residential area, it was home to one of Maui's numerous sugarcane plantations. Today, most of this former agricultural land has been purchased by wealthy real estate moguls who plan to expand Waikapu's suburban sprawl. Mike Atherton, one such real estate tycoon, has made admirable efforts to give back to the community. One such example is his decision to lease 600 acres of former sugarcane land to local farmers. The seeking route can be found on two of these 600 acres. Although the farm is small, there's much to be seen and much to do. There is a nursery with native Hawaiian and non-native plants, flowering plants, food crops, and trees. There's a chicken coop with about 20 hens and roosters. There are two sheep, a goat, 12 ducks, six pigs, and counting. Large compost piles, worm bins, and multiple mounds of mulch are dispersed around the farm. All of these elements of the seeking root are essential to Matthew and Janine's core mission to restore Waikapu's soil health and reduce the impact of climate change through regenerative agriculture. Why is Waikapu's soil in need of restoration? After more than 100 years of monocropping or growing the same crop on the same land, the soil in Waikapu is exceptionally degraded. It is generally accepted within the soil science community that monocropping reduces soil health and leads to erosion. The consistent application of fertilizer and pesticides reduces soil productivity. Additionally, growing only one crop leads to a lack of diverse nutrients in the soil, which in turn decreases the number of soil strengthening microorganisms. The practice of tilling or using tractors or hand tools to churn the soil before planting seeds in the ground also accelerates soil erosion. This is especially true when soil quality is already low. The sugarcane industry, the sugarcane industry's monocropping legacy is easy to see near the Seeking Root Farm. One only has to walk to the vacant land next to the farm and swing a shovel into the dry, compacted earth to notice that something is not quite right. The soil on the farm, however, is on a path to restoration. Matthew and Janine are using the core tenets of regenerative agriculture to accomplish this. There are no pesticides or fertilizers used on the farm, and there is no tilling. The diverse variety of trees, flowering plants, and food crops have replaced what used to be endless fields of sugarcane. Matthew and Janine are also strategically rotating their farm animals to different areas, which increases soil restoration. They turn weekly supplies of food waste from local restaurants into nutrient-rich compost and worm tea which is then applied to different areas on the farm. These proven methods increase biodiversity, soil health, carbon sequestration, and plant productivity, which all aid in the effort to stop the climate crisis. Once again, the three main goals of my MEM project were to help the farm increase productivity, assist in soil restoration, and develop a new system of composting, which utilizes black soldier flies. All three of these goals were intertwined as they each benefited Matthew and Janine's mission of restoring Waikapu and fighting climate change. When they are not at the farm, Matthew and Janine both work full-time jobs. They do not have any farming machinery and only occasionally receive help from volunteers, especially during COVID. So increased productivity meant offering a helping hand. After I began volunteering my time at the, at the farm, I immediately saw how my help was expediting some of the more laborious processes. We sifted hundreds of pounds of compost, 
we use pitchforks to move countless wheelbarrows full of mulch, a vital element of the Seeking Roots composting method. We constructed windbreak walls to protect newly planted native trees from Waikapu's well-known and ever-present gusts. We planted diverse crops like pigeon pea to aid in soil health and restoration. Showing up to help at the Seeking Root has directly aided in Waikapu's soil restoration. The methods of regenerative agriculture utilized at the farm, such as no tilling, planting diverse cover crops, never using pesticides or fertilizers, rotating farm animal pens, and layering compost across the farm are proven to increase soil health and increase carbon sequestration. According to data for progress, healthy soil absorbs, absorbs more carbon from the atmosphere than degraded soil. The methods of regenerative farming also inherently use less fossil fuels. This could have profound effects on our effort to stop the climate crisis in its tracks. Data from Project Drawdown shows that if, a small, far, if small and large farms put these practices into action, about 22 gigatons of CO2 equivalent emissions could be reduced or sequestered by 2050. Putting these regenerative agriculture practices into action was very rewarding for me, as I felt that I could tangibly measure my impact in the effort to end the climate crisis. The final aspect of my MEM project went beyond offering a helping hand where it was needed. After speaking with Matthew about elements of the farm he had envisioned but not yet put into action, we both settled on the idea of developing a black soldier fly composting bin. Black soldier flies are large winged insects that look a bit like black wasps. These flies do not sting or bite, however. They only live a few short weeks, sometimes days, as a fly, spending most of their life cycle in larva stages. A successful black soldier fly compost bin attracts adult flies, which then lay their eggs in the food waste, leading to a surplus of black soldier fly larvae, feeding on and breaking down the food waste into compost. When the soldier fly grub has eaten enough to move on to the cocoon stage, it instinctually climbs up towards the top of the compost bin, removing itself from the food waste. Farmers can use this instinct to their advantage by installing a relatively simple system of pipes and collection, bu collection buckets, which become filled with black soldier fly grubs. These grubs can then be fed to chickens as they are almost 50% protein and high in calcium content which is good for hens laying healthy eggs. Therefore, the Black Soldier 5 bins offer a diverse and compact method of composting and can reduce costs in feeding chickens. They also provide an exceptionally nutrient food source. To date, there are three Black Soldier Fly bins in operation at the Seeking Root. Matthew and Janine are adamant about utilizing recycled materials at their farm. So, we use common plastic cage tanks donated by the local Maui Brewing Company as the base for these bins. These tanks are usually filled with, li with liquids. First, the tanks were removed from the cage. We then used a saw to cut the top off the tank. Next, we filled the bins with mulch and food waste. It took some time to figure out what combination of waste would attract the black soldier flies. After doing some research, we tried using wet dog food as an attractant. This, however, attracted mostly common house flies and their larvae, as you can see here. We then found that raw and uncooked, raw or cooked meat worked best for attracting the black soldier flies. As we began to find more soldier fly grubs in the bins, we developed our pipe and collection bucket system. To collect the grubs, we used PVC pipes that were already in storage at the farm and plastic pots from the farm's nursery. So far, our very first bin remains the most productive. This is largely because it has had the most time to attract soldier flies. We have used the grubs found within the first bin to seed the other two bins with grubs. As the weeks have gone by, More grubs can be seen in the compost bins and more mature soldier, soldier flies can be seen flying around the seeking route. 
This is tangible success in itself. We are still working on methods to collect more grubs into the bins, however. The future of this project rests in the increased productivity of the black soldier fly bins. I am happy to keep offering my time and effort at the Seeking Roof, as scaling up the fly bins will require commitment that extends past the due date of my AMEM project. Working on the farm has been an excellent learning experience for me. I used to think having a small farm of my own would be a nice hobby. I now know that it is more like a full-time job. With this in mind, I have an even greater respect for the world's farmers. Thank you and mahalo for watching my presentation.